So today we're gonna to be talking about feet. And I'm gonna be working with Ivy to give you a couple of different exercises to help you notice your connection to your feet and therefore the ground a little bit more intimately. So the first one will be called points on the feet where I'll describe different points you can utilize on your feet as reference points and you can touch them physically or imagine them. And then what we're gonna have you do is either you can do what Ivy's doing and walk around her space to notice those points or you can sit in your chair if you're in too small of a space and simply rock back and forth, noticing the weight shift into your balls of your feet versus your heels and noticing the points that way. The second activity that we're going to do um, is we're gonna massage your feet. So when we massage the feet, um, what I'm gonna have each of you do is massage the bottom of your feet in a very particular pattern that I will describe to you in the video. And we're gonna do one foot at a time. And in between each massage, you can either choose to stand up, walk around a little bit, or again, rock back and forth. And what I will ask Ivy is, is whether or not she notices if there's a difference between one foot and the other. Then we're gonna give the same treatment on the other foot and we're gonna have to try it again and see if we can balance everything out. I hope you enjoy this little self treat five minute craft of Alexander Technique. Um, enjoy. Hi everyone, welcome to an, a Taste of Alexander Technique. Today we have my friend, Ivy. Um, Ivy, would you like to tell a little bit about yourself? Hi, um, I'm a mezzo-soprano in Atlanta, Georgia, and I've been working with Katie on Alexander Techniques since March, March or April 2020. What is your current perception of what the Alexander Technique is for you? So for me, it's very much a, a combination of mindfulness and physicality. Um, it's a nice way to check in on what what is happening in my body because I tend to, to think very hard about things and you know, I'll think through my process and say, this is what I'm going to do. And then my body says, no, I'm tense here. I'm stiff here. I don't, you haven't put this or that in the right place. And uh, the Alexander Technique exercises are really nice as far as uh, listening to that and then relaxing into it and unlocking it and saying, okay, now we're not tense and we're gonna try that again. So in other words, it's giving you an opportunity to not go for the habitual and possibly have an opportunity to alter how you approach a task. I'd say it very helpful out of bad habits. Habits are habits. They're there for a reason. We develop them for a reason and usually it's for a very good reason. Um, it's just whether or not they, these particular habits serve us in the current in our current situation what we want to play with today was points on the feet so just a lot of footwork today and um ivy why'd you choose this particular um exercise because i don't think about very often and also honestly during the pandemic i don't feel like i'm standing up very often <laughs> oh i feel like i spend so much time you know not connected to the entire lower half of my body what I do, you know, even acting wise, when I'm acting to a camera, I'm really only acting from like, at most my waist up, and more often from my shoulders up. And I miss being able to work with my entire body. And I think my voice also misses being in touch with my entire body. And once I'm reaching down to points all the way on my feet, all the way on the other side of me, everything else in between also kind of lines up. When we're playing with the points on the feet, basically we're getting to know the bottom of our foot a little bit more intimately. Um, and by giving points, it's actually giving us re what's called a reference point um, or something we can look to to help us um, connect more deeply with an area that's not as easy to connect with. So with um, the feet where I'm gonna have Ivy do, and you guys can do it as well, is we're gonna have a point on the front. So picture these as your toes. And this is um, 
the top of your foot and this is the back of your foot, your heel. So one point in front, one point in back. And what I'm gonna have you guys do is you're gonna, and you can actually touch your feet so you can actually feel those points or get an idea of where it is. And you're gonna walk around the room with the points on your feet. Whenever you're ready, I'd be. Cool. Um, so the next one we're going to do is two points in front, one point in back. All right, two points in front, one in back. And next one, two and two. So you can switch up which way you wanna walk. I know you're in a tiny space um, as most of us are, <laughs> but you can switch up which way you wanna walk. So you can kind of feel the weight shift in both feet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Two and two. And the last one, you can like literally do as many points as you want, but like, this is the one I usually go up to. We're gonna do three in front and we wanna keep, um, because your feet actually move from the back heel, outside heel, to the pinky, to the big toe. When you roll, it's just the natural roll of the foot. The weight, it, you're gonna feel more points on this side versus this side. So kind of give them here and then a little bit more separation for the third one. Okay. And then two in back. Okay, so three in the front, two in the back. Which one did you like best and why? I like the one point in one point in back, two points in front. Cause so I feel like it gives me uh, a sense of agility and being light on my feet while also feeling connected to the ground. Cool, that works. So going off of this, there's another little thing that we're gonna kind of play with today. And it kind of, allows for us to, again, feel the foot a little bit more. We're gonna do a little bit of a foot massage. Oh my goodness. And <laughs> so if you want to find a place to sit, um, I'll give you time to move yourself um, and we'll get going. try it with both feet at the same time or you can actually try it with one foot at a time to see if there's a difference between um, how the foot feel one foot feels over the other um, and that kind of gives you a greater sense of about how much we hold our feet it's crazy you want to think about it so for everyone this is how it's gonna go um, Ivy is focusing on her right foot she is going to massage along the outside of the foot up through the top, right below the toes, and just so she can feel the sensation of the roll of foot. Then what she's going to do is she's gonna give little touches, especially in her heel, where she just needs a little gripping so she can actually grip the bottom of her heel like this. And then she can kind of give what I call piano fingers all the way through the rest of the foot. And then towards the middle, she's gonna take her fist and kind of rock towards where the arch would be. And you can do this for as long or as short a time as you want. And then she'll finish up with plucking each of the toes. 
And what this does is it gives an added sense of what, of what your foot is making contact with. So as Ivy finishes up and she wants to stand up, <laughs> she is gonna walk around the room and see if there's a difference between her right foot and her left foot. definitely feels a little bit more like tingly feels warmer than my left foot Maybe yeah or something okay now try walking with it and see and let me know what you think it's like my right foot feels a little more awake like my eyes are more open on that side Like I'm noticing and feeling more of the floor. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting more sensory information on that side. I'm more aware of them. No, what it is is I'm aware of more of them. I can feel more of the surface area of the sole of my foot. You want to even it out for yourself? Yeah. same thing again she's going around from the back of the heel through the pinky toe and up through right below the toes same deal and then she's gonna kind of massage the heel you can do this by kind of squeezing a little bit on the heel and piano fingers whatever you wish and then taking your fist and kind of going right in to where the arch is. And you can kind of, if you want to add this to your routine, you can kind of go right under where the big toe is and go where people are just like, ouch, my foot. <laughs> and then you can go and pluck those toes and once you finish up with that, you can get up again and see the difference once again. One's gonna still be stronger because you just had some fun with your, your other foot. Yeah, it's the, it's the same feeling, feeling like a little bit more, a little bit more information coming from, from those nerves. And now as you walk around the room, Ivy, can you allow your eyes to take in the room as well? Because that's one of the hardest things to do is when we're experiencing something that's so internal to take a moment and also reconnect with the outside world. Zen. Cool. Now, Ivy, if you had one word or phrase for our bow today, what would it be? Awake. Yeah. So this is a really easy thing to do when you are between um, lessons, teaching, um, or you are have a break, a five minute break at work. You can do any of these things within that short time frame. And what it will do is offer you a little bit of sense of grounding or feeling of up, depending on what your energy is like that day. Um, and it's just, it's a nice little pocket of time that you can take for yourself. I hope this was helpful to everyone, especially you, Ivy, who um, <laughs> I'm so happy that you're here. Um, and I miss you. I miss you too. <laughs> um, thank you so much for joining us today. I, I truly appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. For those who aren't familiar, this is a mindfulness technique that incorporates both mind and body and finding the unity, the connection between the two. Um, what it offers is an approach to our daily life, ourselves with more ease. So basically what we're learning here is how to keep it simple. 
we discuss how habits are built over time subconsciously in the mind and physically in the body. What I offer is the opportunity for us to bring these subconscious thoughts, these um, holdings in our body, tension as some people will call it, and bring them forward so that we have the ability to observe them and explore them and then make conscious choices to see whether or not they serve us anymore. And from there, we're given the choice to either continue on as we are or try something different. Throughout all this, I am basically a reference point or guide providing you with space to make discoveries and have moments of understanding that are meaningful to you. At the end of our time, I ask for what's called the bow, which is basically a word or a phrase about something that stood out for you during our time, something that gives you context for future discoveries. The bow is not really the end, it's kind of the beginning of the learning process because we are introducing an idea, a thought process during our lesson time. And then once you leave the situation, you get to explore, to choose to explore it um, in your everyday life. And that's what's really beautiful and unique about the Alexander work. What I'm hoping that you get out of these times together is that you can start to see changes from person to person and how they take in the information, what their definition of the work is, and maybe coming to a conclusion or a thought process of what you believe the Alexander Technique to be.